So this week we've finally got to the stage where we can burn the ragwort. For any of you that have been following our vlogs for a while, you'll know that this has been going on for the whole year that we've been here. The amount of ragwort that we pulled out was just, well, it was like something I'd never seen before. Like, like a field of corn that was actually a monster, raving, murderous, toxic, horse-killing plant that had taken over the field. And yeah, it literally took an army of us to get it out. So this is what it looks like now and if you can tell these are all the seed heads and they can actually lie dormant for up to seven years. Oh, I tell you what, this plant is unstoppable but I have done a full video on how to deal with this stuff now that we have had so much experience with it. So I'll link that to the end of this video for anyone who'd like to know in the future. So we started off with getting the tarpaulins out from underneath the ragwort piles. I'd originally put it under there because I thought we'd be able to move the ragwort in some kind of trailer or something, but it just didn't work out. We just couldn't get a trailer either into the field or on the right days or just random things happened and then we couldn't move it. So we managed to rip up the tarpaulin and we cut it into strips into three big strips and pulled them out from underneath i'm hoping that none of the middle ones been left under there but if it is i'm sure we can get it out as we're shoveling it back up to burn it i will be so glad when this is gone this has literally been a nightmare hasn't it and uh have i told you i hate ragwork after researching, we've just realised that the only way we can deal with this is by burning. And it's also the only way that you can actually kill off the seeds. So the boys got back to removing the old screws and nails like they were doing last week. But this time they were getting it out of the more rotten pieces of wood so that we could use those in the fire. So it was time to uncover the ragwort that we'd prepared the day before. And I started by digging a hole into the side of the biggest pile and then really packed in a section of hay. And then I soaked the hay and the surrounding ragwort pile with half a can of diesel. After researching, we found that diesel soaked hay was the best thing to use because it acts like a wick and burns for longer and burns hotter so that it can dry out the really wet ragwort and 
really help with burning it down. I had bought with me one of those fire logs that burn for like four hours continuously and uh, I'd bought it as like a backup so I made another hole in the ragwort but this time I didn't fill it with any hay or anything I just wanted to see if it would burn because the fire log burnt for so long unfortunately it didn't work so well so I made a little hole at the back of the ragwort pile and then moved the log round to the back. And I think it did quite well. So, digging a hole. So my idea is, me and Simon have come up with this idea. I'm going to dig a hole, put the hay in it, light it, and I'm going to beat Mum's fire <laughs> in half a time. <laughs> Using science <laughs> and physics. Mum's fire is looking quite good. I'm not going around. When this when this up in flame, yeah. You'll say, whoa! How did you do that? And then you go back on the video. Yeah, but you want to go over the top in like a halo. One thing right there is I put straw in an hole and I've covered it in diesel, as you can clearly see. And it smells nice. And then I'm going to light it, it's going to go up in flames. And that, well, I don't know what you've got over there. Oh! Well, right there is how you make a fire, a ragwort. Simple. <laughs> but the problem was that it wasn't so simple. Leo actually came up with another ingenious idea where he dug out the other side of his ragwort pile so that the fire could get all the way through and then it actually dried out most of the ragwort on the top even then though the fire just kept going out so i kept putting some more diesel on there adding some more clumps of hay digging more holes and as you can see the fires would start and they'd rage and then it would just go out again so this actually went on long into the night until it got dark